thank you for the introduction and also thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak and also organizing this beautiful uh, conference and workshop last week. Also, continuing on the theme of apologizing, my work has nothing to do with perfectoids, so that's out of the way. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that whatever I'm going to talk about in this particular talk, most of it can be found in, uh, in this article that I have submitted recently in archive, which is called Rigid Analytic Vectors in Local Analytic Representations. And also a disclaimer, um, after I submitted this article, I found out that most of these results in some form or another can be found in Emerton's unpublished work before. Um, okay, so I have divided my talk into three parts. First of all, I'll give some context to the problem I'm dealing with. And then um, this main theorem is part of a bigger uh, problem that I want to solve. And then uh, at the very end, I will talk about applications and future directions. So of course, like any mathematical idea, uh, it's impossible to give acute historical description uh, of, of any motivation in like five minutes. Uh, I'll just to choose conveniently what uh, can work as a motivation towards the problem. Uh, in 1997, Schneider and Stuhler has this paper where they functorially associated to any smooth representation, uh, well, that star means with extra conditions of some connected reductive group G, a uh, sheaf uh, on the Bruchatitz building of G. In fact, uh, as a precursor to this work, in 1994, they had a paper where instead of an arbitrary connected reductive group G, uh, they chose GLN F, and uh, they constructed a co-sheaf or a coefficient system uh, associated to the Bruchatitz building of GLN, and most of my work is motivated uh, from that paper. I want to generalize it, uh, but that's work in progress. Um, also, in early 2000s, Schneider and Teitelbaum introduced the category of locally analytic representations. The idea was uh, to have a common umbrella under which we can discuss, for example, smooth representations uh, finite dimensional locally algebraic representations uh, of periodic analytic groups and periodic representations. So they wanted something which is nice enough to cover all these nice uh, subcategories, but also not as hideous as the whole category of continuous periodic representations. And it's natural to ask, can we mimic this Snyder Stuller's construction for a smooth complex representation in the case of locally analytic representations? So that's the key motivating question uh, in my work. But you'll realize that I have strategically did not mention this, this line, the last line of the first bullet point. Uh, the first step of schneider stuhler was the observation that the functor that, that takes a representation to its invad invariance uh, by some property subgroup H is exact. This is definitely not due to them, but like they make this observation as their first step. And the part that I want to concentrate on, on today's talk is whether the analog of this is true in the case of locally analytic representations. And the answer is yes, it is true if we interpret this correctly. So before that, uh, I'll just set up. We have uh, finite extensions of QP, F and E. And E is always going to be my coefficient field. And uh, we fix an F analytic uniform propy group H. Uh, I am not going to define all these technical details about uniform propy, but um, and the, if you have a periodic analytic group, periodic analytic Lie group, it always has one of, uh, one of these kinds of groups as a subgroup. So if you're dealing with representations of a periodic analytic Lie group, uh, you can consider it as a representation of a uniform property group. Uh, and these extra added technical conditions, which I have not mentioned, are basically conditions on the Lie algebra associated to H, and it's some sort of OF invariance, where OF is the ring of integers of F. Also, uh, if you have such a F analytic uniform property group H, you can canonically associate uh, to that group H, rigid analytic affinoid subgroups, a nested sequence of rigid analytic affinoid subgroups in some sense, 
And, uh, and with these subgroups, we have the wide open subgroups, which I denote by H and not. These are going to play an important role in the further development. The key object that I want to deal with, uh, also before, before I go to this, uh, I want to say, just as an example, a very basic example, we can think of H as ZP and this H in knots, you can think of as P to the N M C P, where M C P is the maximal ideal of O C P, uh, the ring of integers of C P. So the main uh, objects of our discussion is locally analytic admissible representations of H. I am going to define admissible representations uh, at some point, but locally analytic uh, mostly because it's a lot of functional analytic uh, jargons. I want to avoid the definition or the precise definition of that. Instead, the, the name is sort of self-explanatory, right? So if you have a locally analytic representation, it means the action of the group can locally uh, around each point be expressed as a power series with coefficients in V. Uh, again, if you want to keep an example, the simplest example in mind, um, You can think of the locally analytic functions from ZP to E. Uh, this is a locally analytic representation of ZP, where the action is just by translation. So to each, uh, to such a locally analytic representation, uh, the admissibility is not necessary for the next definition. But uh, so to each locally analytic representation of H, we can associate the rigid analytic vectors which I have denoted by V, H, and not N, which is just the vectors inside V, uh, where the action of H and not is rigid analytic. I mean, this, there is some sort of hand waving going on here, but more or less, that's the idea. With this setup, um, the initial question of Schneider and Stuller can be formulated as the main theorem of this talk, uh, where Instead of V going to the invariant vectors, we prove that the functor which takes a locally analytic admissible representation V to its H and not analytic vectors, or rigid analytic vectors, is exact. So first of all, I interpret this functor from the category, uh, as a functor from the category of locally analytic admissible representations to the category of E vector spaces. In fact, I think that this can be uh, enriched like the target category can have more structures because these spaces V, H, and not N has more structures. Um, and also, why is this an analog to Schneider and Stuller's question? So if you, if you take smooth representations, which are in particular locally analytic representations, these spaces V, H, and not N is same as the invariance of some appropriate H, which is the uniform property. Uh, okay, so before I move on, uh, I want to write this functor as a composition of three functors. I have V, I send it to its strong dual, and then I take it to the object of interest, and then uh, So my functor is a composition of these three functors. Uh, we, can, we can figure out the target and the source categories in each of these cases. And in this talk, I want to just concentrate on this part. Uh, because the exactness on these parts are sort of topological formalities, uh, which I have uh, in my uh, preprint, more or less. So the reason we concentrate on this part is that the assumption of admissibility lets us dualize the problem. And the dualization uh, is essentially have doing algebra over distribution algebras and then co-admissible modules over them. There's a typo here. I will explain this uh, soon. But the key point is what we want to prove is that this functor is actually exact. 
Um, so to deal with these, uh, these locally analytic admissible representations, we need to deal with some technical details which are unavoidable. And in this case, uh, I figured that I will mention the definition of some two of these things, first of them being weak Fresh-Stein structures. So we start with a locally convex E algebra A, and it is said to have a weak Fresh-Stein structure if it is equipped with the following data. We have a sequence uh, AN of locally convex topological E algebras with extra adjectives. Um, and then the key point is that they, are, they form a projective system where these maps, the, the transition maps, are a particular kind. And the algebra that we began with has a projective limit description. A is isomorphic to the projective limit of AN, uh, the projective limit on the right-hand side coming from these maps. And we have the added assumption that this map, the natural map A to AN, uh, is dense or has dense image. So this is uh, the technical definition of a weak Fresh Stein structure. Uh, just as a comment, this was uh, first de defined in Emerton's work. Before that, Schneider and Stuhler, uh, Schneider and Teitelbaum uh, did Fresh Stein structures, which was slightly less technical, uh, but also less general than this. And if this is too technical, a key example again, I'll come back to this. So we have the locally analytic functions from ZP to E. Then um, the strong dual of that, that has a topology. The strong dual of that is called the distribution algebra of ZP. That ZP, uh, the, the distribution algebra of ZP has a weak Fresh Stein structure where we can uh, exactly point out the components AN. So if you look carefully, these AANs are nothing but the HN naught vectors H n not n vectors of the locally analytic functions of ZP, and then the dual of that, uh, where this is the analogy, or this is the example to keep in mind. Not only that, uh, it's curious that in such cases, this A n also has, A n also has uh, another description, a very down to earth description. This is also uh, a computation that I did, is that these ANs can be thought of as overconvergent functions on some disks of radius Rn, where this Rn can be made very precise. And I think it's an interesting question uh, to see like, if we can do this in general for other distribution algebras, but um, that's not the point of today's talk. The main reason we are interested in weak Fresh Stein algebras is the following theorem of Emerton. It says that if we start with such a uniform property group H, actually that, that does not, that is restrictive. We can start with much, uh, or like much less re restrictive groups H. Like I think for compact periodic Lie groups, this works. Uh, the distribution algebra, which is the strong dual of the locally analytic functions on H, has a weak Fresh Stein structure. And in particular, the weak Fresh Stein structure is again give, given by the dual of the H n not n are rigid analytic vectors. Okay? So this is the key reason we are interested in this weak Fresh Stein algebras. Um, so once we're done with weak Fresh Stein algebras, there is one other piece of technical detail, which is the coadmissible module. Uh, coadmissible modules are again a system of project, projective system of modules over weak Fresh Stein algebras where we have this uh, sequence of finitely generated topological AN modules, MN. And not only that, this module M has, again, a projective limit uh, description. And these MNs are not arbitrary. They are related to ANs via some isomorphism. And this is the completed tensor product. The reason we are interested in that will be clear. The definition of admissibility relies uh, heavily on this definition of coadmissible module. This is uh, some sort of finiteness condition uh, that's trying to mimic the finiteness condition of admissible smooth representations. So the idea of proof, I mean the idea of proof that this function is exact, 
A local analytic function uh, representation is called admissible if the strong dual of it is a co-admissible module over the distribution algebra. That's just the definition. Not, so that's not, I mean, that's almost like you defining co-admissible modules and then using that to define admissible representations. But the interesting part is that uh, if you remember, these MNs, uh, we, need to def we need these MNs to define co-admissible modules. And for this B, uh, the strong dual of a locally analytic representation, these MNs are explicit. These MNs, as I assume is guessable by now, is just the strong dual of the rigid analytic functions of these wide open subgroups. And now with this setup, Emerton showed in his memoir on locally analytic representations that these MNs have such a description. I'll just write this out because I think this is helpful. So we have that MN, or maybe I'll just use this. We know. Is isomorphic to So that's just Emerton's uh, result, and this is almost formal. So he does not assume anything about distribution algebras or anything. This is almost just a formal result uh, on weak Feshenstein structures and co-admissible modules. So now, once we have that, this proof almost is natural if we can do two things, right? The first thing is losing this completed tensor product. So that's the first step. We prove that in, uh, this is actually where the major work goes in, uh, in this work, that this completion or this completed tensor product is not necessary. In fact, uh, we can just write this as The idea of the proof uh, goes back to, again, Schneider and Teitelbaum, but the point was they did it only for Fresher-Stein structures. Uh, similar kind of results they showed for Fresher-Stein structures, which I have not mentioned so far. Uh, the point is that these distribution algebras, they not only have weak Fresher-Stein structures, they have something called Fresher-Stein structures, which are not the same structures, but they interact, they speak to each other. And the crucial uh, part of this proof is the how do these two things interact, the weak Fresher-Stein structure and the Fresher-Stein structure on distribution algebra. Um, and then once we have this, then it's clear that to show exact nets, all we have to do is show the flatness of this map, that we, the natural map, DLA, HE, 2, D, H, N, R, H uh, flat. So this is, I guess, uh, step one, two, and this is three. This flatness result is, again, uh, due to Emerton mostly, but he does not supply, I think, enough details uh, for, for someone who's reading for the first time. But it's, if, you look at, uh, if you look at the analysis of it, it's, again, uh, dealing with the fresher Stein structure, weak fresher Stein structure, how do they interact? Uh, how do they interact, and it's, it's a huge, like it's a five-page proof uh, using almost all commuted algebra I have seen. Um, so that's basically uh, what I wanted to say about uh, the proof of this theorem, more or less. Um, so that, basic, uh, that allows us to conclude that this functor is exact, and then, as I mentioned earlier, to show uh, exactness uh, on the level of taking V to the rigid analytic vectors. These are topological details. You can, uh, you can fill them in. They're already well known. Okay, so now, how does this whole picture relate to Schneider and Stuhler's original construction? Like, how can we uh, go back to Schiff and all of this? The question really is, uh, what are we looking for? What did Schneider and Stuhler gain from constructing sheaves or coefficient systems uh, with smooth representations? And um, to answer that, 
basically, he has two applications in his original paper. Uh, the coefficient systems the coefficient systems gave rise to chain complexes and then in turn you got projective resolutions of the representation. So briefly, to recall how this goes, he constructs a coefficient system on the Bruchertitz building. Using that coefficient system, uh, Schneider and Stuhler constructs a natural chain complex and then uh, it turns out using that chain complex, they can define a very nice projective resolution of the original representation they started with. That was the application of the coefficient system side. And using the shift theory, using the shift theory, they computed It might be slightly wrong, uh, compactly supported cohomologies. And also, I think, after this, generalizations of this work has found many applications. So it's natural to ask, uh, how can we construct a sheaf using these locally analytic representations? Well, unless we have the sheaf, these questions are pointless to ask, right? So. In the case of locally analytic representations, we need analogs of stabilizers. And uh, by the work of Remy, Thulier, and Warner, uh, to each point x of the Bruchertitz building, we can associate a rigid analytic group, affinoid group gx. And so if you take an open set u, you can consider these uh, rigid analytic group, or maybe the group generated by this, uh, which is just taking union of all the gxs. Once we have that, let's say you have an admissible local, local analytic representation V, then uh, you take an open subset U of the Bruchertitz building, you can construct the rigid analytic vectors of GU, and then take the continuous dual. That's what I have denoted by MVU, the script M. Then this construction of U being sent to MVU gives a sheaf on Bruchertitz building. And in fact, the construction of coefficient system uh, can follow very similarly to Schneider and Stuhler. So instead of taking the stabilizer of a point, uh, you can take the rigid analytic group associated to it, and then take rigid analytic vectors of that. That will also give a coefficient system, which gives rise to a chain complex. Now, the natural question to ask is that, uh, are these any good? Does the schneider stuller procedure, when applied to this sheaf or that coefficient system, give me what they could have accomplished in this? Um, the, the short answer is I don't know. So the point being, Schneider and Stuller uses this result of Bernstein, Borel, and Matsumura, which I think is some sort of result uh, of the category that they're dealing with is a shared subcategory. That's, the, that's something that they have in the case of smooth representations. And I don't think any such results are known for the locally analytic representations. But also, uh, I have done some computations which suggest that, at least for the basic examples of locally analytic representations, so for example, if you take the locally analytic principle series of GL2, and in, in fact, I suspect for GLN, the, the resolution you get is indeed exact. So I'm not sure like how far or how general this holds. But the hope is that, at least uh, in the cases of locally analytic representations, which appear in nature, so for example, locally analytic principle series, or the representations arising from Greenfield uh, representations, uh, this, will, this will give us interesting resolutions. Okay. I think I'll stop there.